I'm not presenting a specific paper, but uh, a general uh, um, uh, body of work that uh, uh, myself and uh, my colleagues at uh, UN Esqua uh, are doing. And uh, uh, when ERF uh, proposed this session and invited us uh, to, uh, to, to talk on behalf of uh, the Arab region, I, um, uh, I chose a set of uh, slides and uh, some stylized facts about uh, uh, some uh, inequalities of outcomes in the, in the Arab region. So I will not uh, talk so much about the methodologies uh, that uh, uh, were used to come up with these, um, uh, these various facts, um, but instead I will just present so graphically, some of the, um, uh, the, the faces of uh, inequality in the Arab region. Um, and I can, uh, as I said, this is a joint body of work of, uh, of uh, our poverty and inequality team at the UN Esqua, uh, jointly with uh, Khalid Abu Ismail, Hassan uh, Hamia, Abdul Karim uh, Jafar, and Jinan Juni. Um, but the, the, this work has not uh, been published yet. It's work in progress. The statistics uh, may not be final. It depends also on uh, approval from uh, ESQA management of uh, you know, the, the methodologies, uh, some vetting of the methodologies. And so uh, I'm just presenting some uh, preliminary results. Um, and uh, that's why I don't want to uh, hold my colleagues to uh, what I present uh, now. Okay. I will quickly talk about uh, multidimensional uh, inequalities, and then I will focus on uh, money metric uh, inequalities in, in income and, um, and wealth. But just to uh, start the discussion of uh, uh, the different types of uh, inequalities of opportunities and outcomes, I will focus more on the inequalities of outcomes that uh, we typically see and we, we discuss in, uh, in relation to the Arab region. So on this, on this front, uh, our team is currently uh, developing a development inequalities uh, index. Uh, it's related to uh, the, the Human Development Index and, uh, uh, and uh, several other indices that ESQA is uh, putting forward to discuss the development experience in the region. Uh, there is an uh, Economic Resilience uh, Index and uh, Development Challenges Index. So when we uh, started focusing specifically on inequalities, we we took the, uh, the, the frameworks, the, the structure of these existing uh, 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 indices and applied them to the specific topic of uh, inequalities. So kind of the, the methodology behind uh, the, uh, the, uh, the development of this index and the, you know, uh, the statistical tests that we performed on this index kind of, uh, uh, were intended to you know, come up with a complementary index on inequalities uh, that uh, uh, but uh, to keep comp uh, comparability with uh, the other development uh, indices. Okay, so the the current working version of the index uh, has a three. Oops, has uh, three dimensions: uh, basic human development inequalities, which uh, consist of uh, health inequalities, education inequalities, and uh, something like. Um, uh, 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 living economic living conditions, which comprise income, uh, wealth, uh, uh, and access to uh, uh, to the financial market. Uh, then dimension for for uh, governance inequalities, which uh, uh, encompass inequalities in in liberties in civic liberties, inequalities in political participation, and inequalities in uh, power distribution. And finally, the dimension of environmental inequalities, uh, where we, uh, because of uh, uh, limited information that uh, is available, uh, we are only c controlling for um, uh, 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 exposure to air pollution and uh, uh, exposure or mortality from water, sanitation, and hygiene uh, deprivations in the region. 
Okay. Um, when we started developing the, this index, we wanted to get an overall picture of inequalities, taking into account uh, uh, outcomes and opportunities. Uh, but we, um, uh, but then we chose to really focus on outcomes alone, and uh, so. Uh, all of the sub-dimensions or individual indicators uh, that are in this index are various, uh, are measures of various uh, uh, outcome inequalities. And uh, we also, uh, in each of these dimensions, sub-dimensions and indicators, we, we try to um, distinguish vertical inequalities and horizontal inequalities to get a sense of uh, the, the structure of experience of inequalities across the whole society. And uh, so in each of these, in most of these indicators, we are able to uh, study, let's say, the uh, gaps between demographic groups specifically men and women uh, in, those in those indicators and uh, across uh, socioeconomic uh, classes. So, so uh, in most of these dimensions uh, and indicators, we can see that uh, they consist of a vertical as well as horizontal um, uh, variables measuring inequality. Okay, let me jump a little bit. Let me just jump to the results of this exercise. Uh, we find that, so uh, on this slide I show the, uh, the, the scores of the Development Inequalities Index across Arab countries, uh, the, the, the lowest score in, uh, indicating the lowest inequalities and the best performance is in uh, the middle income countries of the Arab region. Uh, the worst scores, close to one. We, we, we have least developed and conflict affected countries. And then let's say the, the GCC subregion, sub we have you know, somewhere throughout the distribution, uh, a lot of them in the middle of, uh, of the distribution. And uh, I think this, uh, this gives an interesting uh, story about what kind of inequalities are felt in each uh, subregion uh, of, uh, of the Arab world. Um, <clears throat> In uh, the one, one result we see here is that you know, governance inequalities uh, uh, have the greatest contribution to the overall inequalities uh, score. Uh, environmental inequalities, at least uh, as we measure them currently, uh, take a small have a small contribution, and then uh, basic human development inequalities uh, take the kind of the second largest contribution. And within these human development inequalities, it's the, uh, the, the wealth and income that uh, contribute most to the inequalities and in wealth and income that contribute most to the overall multidimensional inequalities. Okay, we can see uh, improvement over time between, uh, between 2000 and 2020 in uh, the majority of the region with some, some exceptions. Um, and uh, now we can, so th this is kind of an introduction to the following slides where I will talk just a little bit more about this, uh, uh, this pillar or this uh, dimension of human development inequalities and then I will jump to talking about income and wealth. Okay, so uh, if we look carefully at what happened between 2010 and 2020 in uh, the majority of uh, Arab countries, we would see that it's the human development uh, inequalities that improved. Um, and here I just want to make one uh, small message that generally we see that across the whole region, that in terms of uh, basic health and education, uh, most countries in the region made great stride in the past uh, decade, but there are still some mixed results. And uh, they, we will also hear about uh, this issue in the, in the next two presentations uh, by Rana Hendy and uh, Paul Magdisi. Um, because they will talk more about uh, health and education. And so one, uh, so 
In this graph, I show the, the general improvement in, in achievements uh, in uh, Arab countries. And on the, on the, vertical, uh, on the horizontal axis, I show the, the change in inequality between 2010 and 2020. Uh, we see that most, for most countries and most uh, uh, outcomes, the, the points are in this quadrant of the graph, meaning that over the 10 years, there has been general improvement in access and leveling of the field, so less inequality. But we, we see some, some mixed results where, let's say, uh, a completion of lower level of education, we can see much more improvement than completion of 12 years of education. We can see that, uh, let's say here we have Jordan, Iraq, Comoros, so the so generally so the improvements are not across the board across all indicators and across all uh, groups of countries and uh, so it's worth uh, keep in mind that uh, the the development over the past 10 years has been uh not completely even okay um <clears throat> Okay, so education, especially higher level education and uh, uh, economic inequalities continue to be a problem in the region. Okay, so uh, secondary education, we see that uh, there has been worsening of uh, 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 inequality across uh, the region. Okay. Second set of results for the overall development uh, inequalities uh, index is that if we compare income inequality to this multidimensional inequalities, uh, we see worsening of the picture across most countries. So only in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Bahrain we see an improvement in ranking, an improvement in the situation when we take into account the, uh, the multidimensional, the human development, uh, gov uh, governance, and environmental inequalities. But for the ma vast majority of countries, we see uh, 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 a, wor uh, a worse picture when we consider these other inequalities. Um, let me... Here we go. And finally, final slide on this topic is uh, considering global rankings. We find that uh, the, uh, uh, all of the Arab countries rank in the bottom half of the world distribution. So out of 159 countries, where 159 is the best score, lowest inequalities, and one is the worst uh, inequalities, we see that Yemen and Mauritania are at the uh, rock bottom, and the, the rest of countries are in the bottom half of uh, the world distribution. Okay, let me talk just a little bit about uh, income inequality. Uh, here the issue is that we don't have good reliable data on uh, the entire region, so I will just present some results using uh, household budget surveys which are available sporadically, not so frequently, not for all countries, and, uh, and they have all kinds of measurement, uh, measurement problems that I will not get into here. I, I will be just presenting raw, raw data from the, from the surveys. So we find that uh, uh, the Gini coefficient from these household surveys, uh, the Gini coefficient is quite low. Um, Arab region average is uh, a Gini of 35 compared to world average of 38. Um, looking at the income share of the top 10% of the population, again, we have pretty low figures for inequality, uh, around you know, 20, 25 to 34 uh, of, uh, uh, of aggregate income share going to the top 10% of uh, uh, the population. Um, <clears throat> if we 
this is, uh, uh, we, we don't have good panel data, good reliable panel data on the entire region. If I just uh, put all of these household surveys on one time graph, I would get a picture like this, and from here we might talk a little bit about the trend in uh, uh, this, these within country uh, income inequalities, and we might summarize something that in the, in the 90s, uh, income inequality was uh, uh, stagnating, then falling in the 2000s, and perhaps picking up, increasing in the 2010s. And uh, uh, this would probably agree with uh, you know, the general story we hear around the world, that in the 90s, uh, income inequality was rising, 2000s, income inequality falling, and then 2010s, the kind of the uh, picture is unclear. And so, uh, uh, so, but, but that's kind of, that's the, uh, that's the general picture we get. Now, again, th this, these are not representative numbers. It just includes some countries for some years. And so we should uh, be cautious when we view uh, this graph. Uh, later on, when we look at wealth inequality, we will see actually uh, very similar trends. Uh, uh, something of a you know, stagnating inequality in the 2000s and uh, inequality picking up in wealth in 2010s. Okay, uh, if we look at so uh, we've talked about the Gini, I talked about the top 10% share. Uh, looking at poverty, things have been also going badly in the 2010s. Uh, poverty across most of the region has been rising, particularly in the least developed and uh, conflict affected countries. Um, if we look, if we take Arab region as one country, and uh, we account for both within country and uh, between country inequalities, we get very different uh, levels of inequalities. So in that case, uh, the top 10% sh uh, uh, share of incomes in the region becomes almost 60% and only 8.7% going to the top, uh, to the bottom uh, half of uh, the, the regional, uh, region's population. If we compare it across uh, world regions, we see that uh, Arab region is uh, the outlier here. It, uh, we have the smallest share going to the bottom 50% and the uh, highest share going to the, to the top 10%. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Let me just uh, mention in passing that one of the, the big issues we see in the, in the Arab region and also in Sub-Saharan Africa, is that economic growth doesn't seem to trickle down to households, particularly in our case, the, uh, the uh, ho households covered by, uh, uh, by uh, national surveys, and, uh, and particularly to the poor households. So uh, when we observe GDP or uh, uh, national accounts increasing by 1%, we typically only see uh, incomes of uh, uh, poor households going up by 30%, 30, uh, 30 cents. Okay. Let me skip the, this story and let me talk just quickly about wealth inequality. I'm running out of time, so I'll try to finish within uh, uh, two minutes. Uh, here, uh, I am using uh, data from the Credit Suisse uh, uh, Global Wealth uh, Report data, uh, data book. And it's a... Uh, so in this uh, uh, world, uh, world Wealth Report, or Global Wealth Report, Credit Suisse uh, reports very selected uh, statistics for each country for each year from the year 20, uh, 2000 to 2021. Uh, the, the data bank was, uh, was updated just a week ago, I, I think, so, so this is using the newest uh, uh, data available from that. Uh, using these selected statistics, really only average wealth, median wealth in each country year, uh, we try to, we, we blow up, the, uh, uh, we estimate the full continuous distribution of wealth in each country, a very speculative uh, exercise. Um, 
and, uh, and then we study the uh, uh, various inequality measures and trend over time in, uh, uh, across the region. So, what has been the, so focusing on countries wealth distribution, so only within country inequality and ignoring between country differences, we see, let me just summarize that uh, up for the, uh, we only have data from year 2000 to uh, 2021, we see perhaps um, we see a, a bit of a decrease in inequality in the early 2000s, then stagnation in, roughly stagnation or a small increase in the 2000s, and uh, more of a picking up in the middle income countries, least developed and conflict affected countries in 2010s. We see the same trend for the top 10% share of national wealth. If we take into account both within country and between country inequalities, we see, we see slightly different pictures um, of uh, inequality, we can say decreasing or stagnating in the 2000s, and again, picking up across most of the region, except for the Gulf Cooperation Council countries in 2010s. Uh, what happened during COVID? I don't know, perhaps a small increase in inequality across uh, most of the sub-regions of, of the Arab region. Okay, um, uh, if we see huge differences in the wealth distribution across Gulf Cooperation Council, middle income countries, least developed countries, and conflict affected countries in the region, um, to the extent that if we, uh, these are the Lorentz curves for individual sub-regions in the region. We, we can see a lot of uh, inequality in this. And if we uh, draw one Lorentz curve for the entire um, uh, Arab region and just plot who are the households, where do they come from, we can clearly see the, the, the color scheme is very clear that at, here we would only have uh, the GCC country nationals at the bottom, we have only the least developed conflict-affected uh, country nationals. And uh, around the middle, we see a lot of the people from middle-income countries. So there's clear kind of polarization of uh, the uh, wealth distributions across the uh, Arab sub-regions. Um, done. Thank you so much.